Well, hello viewers. I'm hoping that you are well wherever it is that you're watching us from, be it Middle East, America, Australia, Prof. We're having so many people watching us from all over the country. And we are grateful. I believe if you had we people from... We are grateful and we, we thank them. If we had people from the mood, they'd also be watching us. They would be. <laughs> okay, now let's dive into today's conversation, Prof. And who tells you they're not there? They're there? And they they're listening to Prof. Your name is... Okay, let's yeah. dive into today's conversation. Yes. Now, IABC Chair Wafula Chebukati has welcomed President William Ruto's move to declare his position vacant. This is clear that Wafula Chebukati has done his job and he's coming to a retirement. Now, with all these claims of rigged elections since he took office, no election that he has conducted that has not had any cases of irregularities, Prof. Now, how would you describe Wafula Chebukati's job and how he has performed? First of all, sick of funds in this country must come to an end. Why do you thank somebody for declaring your vac vacants? When it is, is there anyway? Oh, he just he <coughs> just announced that he's retiring. So I mean, and though his why, why, contract was coming to an end. This is a this is a term that is very clear. We know when it's coming to an end. Don't you thank somebody for declaring it? Okay. This is psychophones and well, psychophones. It must end in this country. That's a unajua we will end of February. That's a mutu ana kick start the process of replacing you perhaps. And you thank him for for come on. You're saying he should just have kept well, silent. We know it's gone. It's not anything to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Now, enough with the psycho fancy. How would you describe his career as chairperson of the IEBC? Not inspiring. Okay. What do you mean? Chapukati represents the bad part of our politics. Okay. Management of our politics. Okay. Uh, we've been unfortunate that. Uh, the people charge you the responsibility of running elections. I've always missed the elections. Okay. And um, I have told them, some of them one-on-one, -on -one, that what you are doing could destroy the country. You may not see it now. It could even happen now. It happened in 2007. It could have been worse. But... Cumulatively, these things Chabukatis, Kivuitus are doing, Zaka Sans, mm -hmm. will have an impact on the development of the country. Okay. Yeah. Like so, you can see, yeah. people are beginning to lose faith in elections, which is not good. Nearly 8 million people didn't vote yeah. in this year's general election. When we expected more to vote, instead, less voted. Okay. Even with more registered, we, ex we expected to have a 6 new million voters we could barely make 2.5 15 million voted in 2017 this year 14 million voted i can predict people say i predict wrongly it's not my business to predict but this one i can predict unless we do something if we get 10 million we really have tried okay we will really have tried so therefore what kivuitu did is haunting this country what Isaac Hassan did, what Chabukati has done, they can call him a hero, but he has messed this country big. Okay. I know I'm among few people who open their mouth to say what they feel and what is correct and what is true. There are many people who are hurting in this country. Very, very. You know, people associate me wrongly or correctly with the Azimio side. And they think I speak for them. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. So when I meet people, people cry until I, I literally I meet people who cry. When they see me, they start to cry, shedding tears. Grown men and women. I know the pain there is in this country. It may as well be that William Ruto won fair and square. But Shepkati has given people something to believe that the elections did not go well. That the election was stolen. <laughs> and the people are hurting. And I've repeated this, you know that. Eh? I've said many times. It is dangerous to have a country with so many people having anger bolt bottled inside them. Something small can happen and the country is up in flames. It's not good. You can't make everybody happy, certainly. But having millions of people hurting that much because of a perceived 
electoral fraud is dangerous to the country. And this is because of Chopkati. Okay. Whether there was no rigging or not, whether this election was stolen or, stolen or not, is not the point. There are so many things Chopkati did that make it difficult for some people to be convinced that this election was not stolen. Let me give you one example before you ask another question. Okay. The servers were at the technology. Let's just call the technology. Technology was at the center of the dispute in 2017. Top on the list of things that led to the nullification of the election. NASA side, the Raila side, believed they won this election. And that if servers had been opened, that would have been proved. <laughs> How could the Chebukati, with that knowledge, bring in some mathematics? So that when we go to the, to the court, they cite confidentiality. Prof, that's why I want to ask you this question. Yes. Uh, with all these irregularities, Prof, yes. uh, the, the previous election, there were quite a number of irregularities, uh, servers were not open, yes, yes. and so on, Prof. Yes. Now, who do we have to blame, Prof? Uh, there were these cases, the same body, the same chairperson conducted the election. That's why I'm saying, for one, Chebukat ought not to have run the 2022 election, because public issues are about perception. He's perceived by a big chunk of this country as being very, very partial as being responsible for the mess in our elections in 2020, 2017. To make him oversee the 2022 election was a blunder. Secondly, you blame Jim Kat because, like I was saying, there are so many things he has done. Why bring in mathematics when we had a problem last year about servers? And I want to tell even the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court says they could not manage, and that, that lazy thinking from the Supreme Court, you know, this, this country, we have a problem. The Supreme Court cannot be allowed to engage in lazy thinking. Okay. That Chebukati and his team could not handle the technology aspect, and therefore they had to outsource. That is lazy thinking. First, having had a problem in 2017, even if they were to outsource, they should have outsourced with that in mind. They would have involved the players. It must have been people who are coming in knowing we have a, a history of trouble with the servers and therefore ready with, to be open about it and not cite confidentiality, what, what, number one. So that's how I see the, the Supreme Court as lazy in terms of thinking to that level. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the Supreme Court is being very lazy when they say IBC cannot, could not they didn't have the capacity for technology when this is a first year thing first year not even chiromo for where, where I, do, I work with the investor not even chiromo, chiromo from the computing school of computing science no physics main campus but not on the chiromo physics in china first year have, students doing physics in china we have class one students first year school. doing physics not even computer mm -hmm. they will design for you that pro they do it every time in projects. Kenya, the land of M-Pesa. M-Pesa. What is the, that thinking from the Supreme Court? It's so lazy. Kenya, the land of M-Pesa. We cannot design a simple system to transmit electoral results. Kenya, M-Pesa. When every little circle, including the circle for the judiciary, is running systems for Bosa and Fossa, for your money on your phone. I command. That's very lazy thinking from the Supreme Court. It cannot be, it cannot be allowed to pass. It is lazy thinking. Okay. The Supreme Court has very serious men and women. Okay. They cannot be encouraged to engage in lazy thinking. You cannot say IBC does not have the capacity for technology. And that's why they went to Venezuela or Netherlands. When the first year students can design that thing for you, yeah. When every little circle has computer programs, hey, handling more serious things than uh, transmission of an election, result, election result. This can be done in River Road. If you went to River Road and told these Kikuyu boys there, to like a system you could transmit. Chorogen <laughs> Systems, university. 
We do our SMIS system for transmission of results. Things that can be infiltrated, hacked, and people get fake certificates. And yet there's enough for firewall around it so that you cannot hack and change your marks and get a better degree. If we can do it locally and this, you can't tell me we must go to get some... <laughs> okay, now, bro, moving forward. Let's move forward. Now, moving forward. I could say something not, that not will land me forward before, with the conversation. Before this man, man <laughs> <laughs> and then the same Manyora committee. <laughs> and I'm saying moving forward yes. with the conversation or as a country, bro. Yes. Now, what do we need to do? Do we need to dissolve IEBC? Maybe come up with a new We body, need to rethink. Or do we need to make IEBC stronger? We need to rethink. Rethink in... A number of what? things. Okay. One, the composition. How many commissioners do we need? India, with hundreds of millions of voters, for a long time, I think, has had only three commissioners. So we need to look at the number. Three. They could the go billion up. population. There could be more. Eh? Three, three with, on, with all those billions of population. Millions of voters. Last time I checked, India was employing 40 million officials to run an election. <laughs> <laughs> That's officials. the population of Kenya. <laughs> yeah. And there are three commissioners at that time. I don't know what you said. So we need to look at the number. Secondly, we need to look at how do we get, how do we constitute IBC? Sometimes when we are constituting IBC, I, lo I go in some room and lock myself and cry. When the, this, you know, they are called G what, these commissioners, when they were put there, I was on system TV and I said, surely, and this is the people you can put to be commissioners because an election can bring down a country. And elections have brought down countries. It's not a laughing matter. It's a serious matter. We nearly lost it in 2007. So when I looked at the four commissioners that were added to Chamber, I said, look here. I was on TV, live TV. And I remember, was it some took or Somebody told me, no. I told him, would you allow me to say that? These are good people. But are these the best you can put there? The answer is certainly no. We need the best men there. No, no. My son tells me, Manyona, that I don't go, my dad, don't go that direction. But I will, do, I will continue saying we need the best people. So we need to look at who do we put there? How do we constitute it? I will urge we go back to the IPPG of 1997, where political parties nominate people to that commission. It has serious advantages. Those who want to bash me do not understand. There are many ways of constituting a commission. That is one of them. In fact, very preferred in some areas. I had to work for us in 1997 through IPPG. And s finally, we might need to reconsider the relationship between IBC commissioners and the secretariat. In many countries, the commission is part-time. Like you have a board and a, and a CEO. Where board members, the chairman and board members, are just part-time. They don't run the, 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 the organization. You see, a chairman of a board doesn't run. Chairman of a school doesn't run. The principal runs the school. They only come to deal with the policy. I would recommend we strike a balance between a, between a full-time commission and, a, and, a, and an executive secretariat. We try to find a balance that serves us well. While at that, I will also recommend that we decentralize management of, 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 of elections. In America, these things are more or less done at uh, st state, actual lower than state, at county level. Okay. They are counties. Eh? So I would suggest we devolve the management of elections in this country to county level. We will deal with the issues of uh, where, 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 you know, if you go to CIA, everybody is ODM. Now, if they are the ones managing it, that we can deal with in the process. But their principle of devolving the management of elections to me is very attractive. Okay. Yeah. I see the producer is telling us that we are exceeding the time that we are located okay. now. Let's wrap up the conversation. Thank you. With that. Well, viewers, tell us what do you think. Has Chebu Kati fulfilled what he was appointed to do as the chairperson of the IEBC? Well, uh, let the conversation flow. Keep the conversation going through the comment section. Tell us what you think. Well, you do have the next episode of The Big Question. Enjoy the rest of your day.